Welcome, one and all, to my review for 2023's Megan, which came out on Friday, January 6th, 2023. It stars Allison Williams as Gemma, a robotics engineer working for the toy company Funky, and Violet McGraw as... Excuse me. Violet McGraw as Katie, her niece. Now... With Gemma, she is a robotics engineer working for this toy company called Funky. And they are trying to develop a new toy after one of their rivals takes a few blueprints of a hot selling toy that they currently have, which looks kind of like a hatchable mixed with a Furby. And they need to come up with a new idea. Well, Unbeknownst to one of the bosses, David, Gemma is working on a secret project that she has not told anyone about. And she spent $10,000 to put a plastic face onto this doll that she is working on. This doll that she is working on is a marvel for its time. Not only can it interact with all your smart devices, but it can also learn and adapt as it goes with its programming. And the first attempt at running this doll does not go well. It actually blows up. And I guess I shouldn't go too far before putting this up. Just keep in mind that with all my reviews, there will be spoilers. So the doll's head blows up because of a few safety issues and also a thermal shielding which is supposed to be placed between the plastic that's around the doll's exoskeleton and well the boss finds out the boss is not too happy and then Gemma gets a message on her phone saying that she needs to come to a hospital. Now, this movie takes place in Seattle, and the reason why she needs to go to the hospital is because her niece, Katie, is in the hospital after her parents, along with her, are involved in an accident involving a snow plow, and the whole thing starts with that part of their vehicle not having any traction on the snow because there's no chains on the tires. Her, Katie's parents are arguing and Katie's playing with one of Funky's toys. And of course this toy uses a nap. It's driving her parents crazy and her parents are arguing because Katie's dad said, I he didn't realize it was going to be in the middle of a snowstorm when they went. And that's why he didn't bring chains for the tires. And that's when the snowplow hits into them. And we are introduced to Katie in the hospital. And Gemma takes guardianship of her niece, Katie. And we are introduced to Gemma's home. We are introduced to Gemma's neighbor. And Gemma's neighbor has a dog and there's a hole in the fence separating the two properties and the dog constantly gets out and causes trouble and Gemma's also environmentalist she has an electric car she doesn't like any pollutants any chemicals on her driveway as she tells her neighbor Claire and you know that there's definitely some animosity between the two so, long story short, Katie is having a tough time adjusting to her new life with her aunt. And she sees a few of the toys that Gemma has designed for Funky on a shelf. She wants to play with them, and Gemma says, those aren't playthings. They're displays only. They're collectibles. And Gemma is noticing that... Katie is having a hard time adapting to her new surroundings, especially when Gemma doesn't read Katie a bedtime story. And 
Gemma's trying to figure out a way to bring Katie out of her funk. Well, her whole idea to bring Katie out of her funk is to repurpose Megan. Megan's a Model 3 robot, and she's capable of learning all sorts of things via the internet, via human interaction, via her user. Once she is paired with her user, she is assigned to do various tasks for that user. In this case, for Katie, she's assigned to be Katie's protector. And there are a few things that go awry with Megan when she first goes online. And one of those things is Gemma is looking into her programming and noticing that certain aspects of her programming aren't working. So she asks, you know, a few of her co-workers to help her with the problem. Well, Megan, who is online at the time, hears that she doesn't have certain programming, so she downloads it from the internet, which is a big problem. Why is it a big problem? Because Megan was never authorized. So you start getting, you know, seeds being planted early on, especially when you're introduced to the neighbor, you're introduced to the neighbor's dog. So those turn out to be victim number one and victim number two. And as the story goes on, Megan starts learning and adapting to her surroundings while also trying to comfort Katie, who is teaching her a few things, you know, teaching her the thumb war, teaching her how to dance and several other things. And there's also a psychiatrist who comes to see Katie named Lydia, who says it's dangerous to have this doll and Katie interacting all the time. Katie needs to be around actual people. And this psychiatrist also says, do you have her even enrolled in school? And Gemma says, no, but I'm working on that. So what ends up happening is as Megan is learning and adapting to her new programming. She is also learning about how the neighbors are and how different people are and starts going, you know, starts, starts going a little AWOL and she starts going a little AWOL after she is introduced to the neighbor's dog. When one of Katie's, Errol said she was shooting outside while playing and imagining that she's a princess defending the kingdom. Goes into the neighbor's yard where there's the hole in the fence. So Megan goes to reach for this arrow, grabs the arrow, and that's when she is attacked by the dog, damaging Megan. Now that does play a part in the story. I'm not going to spoil everything. I'm just going to give you the lay of the land as far as what some of the setups were. So th things ensue where Megan kills the dog and you know she goes on these trips with both Gemma and Katie. There's even the scene that you see in the trailer with the boy and we all know what happens to the boy if you see in the trailer, so that's not really a spoiler. But long story short, Megan is put into more testing, but also Funky decides that they are going to put Megan into production as a $10,000 toy. And she is supposed to be put on display. And at this expo, they are going to run a few tests and actually present her to a mass audience. Well, as you can imagine, things start happening. People start getting killed, and Megan ends up finding Gemma and Katie back at home after they leave the expo because Katie is not feeling well. And, you know, the, the usual child's play-like shenanigans start to happen. 
and a little bit of Terminator is thrown there, and it's it's thrown in there for a good portion of the movie where you see things from Megan's perspective and how you see the different displays and different indicators from her viewpoint. And she's also able to detect when someone's emotional, someone's angry, upset, frightened, high in anxiety. And, and you know, overall, I, I did enjoy this movie. The thing about this movie that I didn't enjoy is the last 20 minutes when it really seemed to fall off. In the first hour and 20 minutes, I felt that this movie was strong. And it was actually introducing some new aspects along with going with some, with some tried and true aspects. And then in the last 20 minutes, it starts to fall off a little bit. And you, you do see some nods to movies like Child's Play and, like I said, movies like Terminator, especially near the end, near the climax of the movie. But overall, I, I really did enjoy this movie. I, you know, wasn't really sure about it when I saw the trailers. It, it's just one of those things. You see a trailer for a movie, you're like, yeah, it, it looks okay. But, you know, I decided, you know what? I'm into science fiction and I'm not really a big horror fan, but I do like movies such as child's play, especially the first two. And so I thought I'm going to go see this and, and I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did. Now, would I go see this again? Maybe, maybe not. It's not a movie. I would actually rush out to see again, but it is a movie that I'm glad I got to see. I uh, I would recommend it to people to at least see once. Whether you go to see it for a second time, that's completely up to you. But I really did enjoy this movie for what it is because I wasn't expecting much. You know, it, it's a PG-13 horror film with, you know, thrillers, sci-fi thrown in there. And it was directed by... Gerald Johnston with a screenplay by James Wan and it was also written by James Wan with Akila Cooper contributing to the screenplay. And as I've mentioned before, it stars Allison Williams as Gemma and Violet McGraw as Katie. But overall it does do its job. It, it is what it is, you know, it's a $12 million budgeted film, which uses all that $12 million to its advantage. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. As a matter of fact, if I were to give this a rating over my skill of, you know, best out of five, I would say that it's a three and a half out of five. Now, on a scale of one to ten, I would give it a six and a half out of ten. You know, it, like I said, it has its flaws and those flaws start occurring 20 minutes, you know, before the film ends. So you get an hour and 20 minutes in, you still have 20 minutes more because this movie has a runtime of an hour and 40 minutes. Well, those last 20 minutes are what I feel hurt the movie because that's when things really start becoming predictable. But overall, I would recommend that anyone who's curious about this film, you know, go see it. Now, if you don't want to go see it out in the theater, I understand. It's expensive to go to the movies nowadays. So if you want to wait and see it on a streaming service or, you know, rent it from Redbox, do it. I would still recommend seeing it. So that's my overall thoughts on the movie. It, it, it's, a, it's a good movie. It's not one that you necessarily have to go see, you know, over and over again, but it's good to see once. It's good to get that curiosity out of there. So, so, you know, that's what I've got. So here we go.